Okay guys, uh, I've wanted to do this topic for a while and it's gonna take a couple sessions to get through, but, but, uh, but hear me out, okay? This is probably one of the most important things that I've learned through all of my um, kind of education, okay? So uh, my master's in leadership, my master's in Christian ministry, bringing these together, like this topic for leadership and for just being a part of any group. If you're a father and, and you, your family is, is a group, uh, if you're a mother, your family is a group. If you're a part of a church, that's a group. If you're a part of a small group, that's a, that's a group within a bigger group, uh, within, you know, like a small group within a church. Uh, if you're a business person and, there's pe and you work with three or four different people, that's a group. Guys, so this is so important. Uh, and the understanding of, the, of this is so important. And uh, what I want to talk about is the human nature to scapegoat in connection to, and we'll talk about that, in connection to um, group formation and the stages of group formation, okay? And uh, this is a huge topic, so I'm going to probably share on some things um, that, that might not make a whole lot of sense. Um, I would encourage you, if you don't understand something, to give me a call. But, but recognize that this is so very important. At some point, what I'll do is I'll actually post, uh, I wrote a paper on this, and what I'll actually do is a post uh, uh, a link to my paper on, online there, a part of the, the thoughts from the pastor, so a person could go through it, read it. I was planning on and even endeavored at some, uh, a, a couple times here to kind of read through it, but it just gets too long, uh, and it's probably easier to read than for me to... To, to read out loud to you. Um, so, why I want to talk about this, I want to talk specifically about two topics and then kind of bringing them together and what, how as leaders we need to be, Christian leaders especially, you need to be very much guarded against this. So, uh, and it's going to be just a brief, 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 brief overview of both topics. But I want to talk about them so that at least you're aware of it. So first of all, let's talk about group formation, okay? Um... So group formation. I'm going to go on. Uh, I'm going to go off Tuckman's uh, form, a a form of group formation, which is four, which has four basic basic parts. Now this is this is this is kind of uh, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. This is kind of the foundational uh, model of group formation. It has four parts. There's been other models that have been added to this kind of thinking that have eight models or even 12, 12 or sorry, eight eight steps or 12 steps. Um, I'm, I'm choosing to use Tuckman's uh, kind of uh, model because I think it, it most clearly allows us to see the, um, the storming stage. And I'll talk about that stage in a moment. And then it also um, kind of uh, doesn't get too convoluted in terms of all the other information that's out there. So it's a little bit simplified, uh, but it also allows us to get a good understanding. And I think the, the basis of it uh, us just understanding kind of the basics of it is enough for us to, to start to be on guard against uh, scapegoating in our in our groups and in our organizations and as Christian leaders. Um, so uh, Tuckman presents four basic steps of group for, group formation. And so guys, these steps, it's, it's called group formation, but it's actually these, every group, no matter where you are, so every church, every home group, every group of people at work, every family is in this somewhere in one of these stages. If they're a group, they can be kind of put into some one of these stages. And the four stages are this. Number one is forming. Number two is storming. Number three is norming. And then the, the, the last stage is performing. Okay? So forming, storming, norming, and performing are the four stages. Okay. And we're just, I'm just going to go a quick, a quick overview, and I'm going to read a bit of this from my, from my paper. In the forming stage, we see that the group is brought together to accomplish some purpose. There's a purpose in the group, okay? They, they're, they've been brought together because of something, okay? Whatever that might be. A family is a, has been brought together because they are related. Uh, church, brought together for church reasons, uh, those kind of things. The group's aim is to test out the boundaries of both interpersonal and task behaviors, so as groups, we are engaged in paying attention to, okay, what should we do? What do we need to do as this group? But also, 
who are we in this group and who am I in this group? So we're testing out interpersonal, so person to personal relational, right? And task behaviors in this group. Um, by the ongoing testing of the interpersonal realms, individuals establish dependency relationships with one or several influences. These influences are from the leader, other members who are desired, the group, stand, the group standard, standards that are already developed by pre-existing norms and greater culture norms impressed on the group by str stronger individuals within the group. Um, the new, so basically, uh, um, when you enter into a group or you're a part of a group, um, there, there's a, lots going on, basically. Let's just leave it at that. The newly formed group, if it's newly formed or even an ongoing group, we recognize that there are cycles in the groups are aiming to understand who they are within the group. So newly, new, new, every member, every member is aiming to understand who they are within the group. Learning and clarifying their own uh, identi identity and role. This stage is a stage of inquiry. And that's, that's the simplest thing to say that. Okay, the forming stage is the stage of inquiry. We're trying to figure out where we fit in the group, and then what my specific task is. Um, the forming stage can be passed through quite quickly, or it can take years. Okay, because it's, it's introductory. It's inquiry. So if you have a group that's really, really tight-knit and somewhat open with each other, very forward with each other, you could move through it very quickly. If there's lots of miscommunication, if there's lots of, uh, if, if they don't meet very often, it can take a long time because a person doesn't quite know. And so you get, you're always kind of in this inquiry stage. Now, sorry, so stage one, right? Uh, we're gonna go there on the, on the stage. I'm gonna need a new, a new marker. This one might be better. That was not my favorite. Okay, so stage one, forming. Okay, and it's inquiry. So you're trying to figure out kind of where you are at in that structure. Now think about that. If you get a new job, the, you know, and you come to a new group of people, this is what, this is where you engage. This is what you're doing. You're trying to figure out where you fit, figure out who's who, figure out where they are in kind of that structure. And I think lots of times we don't, I dropped my pants up pen there. Lots of times we don't ne necessarily intentionally think about this, but I think more often than not to kind of put it simply, we're trying to figure out, okay, who do we like? Who do we not like? And where do I fit? Kind of right, what am I supposed to be doing? And I think if you think about kind of every new job that you've ever been at, or even if you, you know, you go to a new class, or if you, you know, uh, you, you see a bunch of your friends, but there's also new people there, you kind of walk up and that's kind of what's going through your head. Okay, who are these people? Where do I fit with them? Where do they fit? Do I like them? Do I don't like them? That kind of thing. Okay. And so that's the forming stage. The second stage is the storming stage. So once you kind of figure out in the first stage, once you kind of figure out the second stage, and I'm just gonna kind of do that. Uh, once you kind of figure out where, sorry, I'm just gonna grab another marker. All my markers are number two, number one. So this number two stage is a fight, okay? It's the fighting stage, it's the storming, storming. Um, okay, it's the storming stage. So what's happening in this stage is that you kind of now figured out where you're at. You kind of figure out where everyone else is at. You also figured out what everyone else expects you to be doing. You also figure out what you want to be doing. You figure out where you, what you don't want to be doing. So all of this inquiry, all of this questioning is now solidified. So you're well into what you're doing. You've kind of figured it out. And the storming stage 
is the stage where you kind of start going, okay, this is how it is, but this is what I want. And so people start to, in the stage, kind of fight for what they want, okay? Um, and so, and so what happens is if the people that you like, you want to spend more time with them. You want to be more engaged with them. The people that you don't like, you want to remove yourself from spending so much time with them, right? And that sometimes is, takes, you know, like when, when your boss comes in and says, okay, you and you. Uh, you, I want both of you guys to work on this project and you hate the guy, you're going to be like, oh, excuse me, right? Now, in the storming thing, you don't know if you hate the guy yet. You kind of have some suspicions, but you're not like, no, I'm not working with that guy, right? And so in the storming stage is when, was when the people that are a little bit more um, dominant start to stand up and say, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. The passive people will engage their own systems of control passively. The dominant people will engage their systems of control in trying to kind of get to be what where they want more aggressively. But in the end, all of us are engaged in, in the storming state, kind of implementing our systems of control and our systems of, you know, trying to make things better for our, ourselves. We, we all engage in that. And therefore, there's a ton of, conflict and storming. Now, this often happens very politely. It, it's not, you know, like when you're thinking, well, I don't, I don't know anything like that. Don't think of like punching people in the face and all that kind of stuff. Think more of like how we politely engage in moving away from the things we don't like and moving towards the things that we do like. Think of it like that, okay? Often this stage doesn't come to blows you know, at the start of it, okay? Often it's not ugly here, okay? Often this stage only gets ugly right towards the end, okay? Right towards the end, if it gets ugly at all. So, so the truth is, um, the truth is, that this stage becomes, this stage becomes, uh, more and increasingly tense tension happens, the fight increases because people are moving towards finding out the truth, right? People are engaged in finding out the truth and then if they're going to accept the truth or reject it. And that's really what's going on in that group. Then number three, okay, and we'll talk about storming a little bit more because it becomes kind of the dominant topic and, and, and too, like what goes on through storming. And I, what I suggest is that scapegoating happens uh, through storming and then, uh, and, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But for, number three, number three, let's, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Number three, the third stage is norming. Okay. And now the third stage, I would argue, and so would many others, um, I think of um, uh, Patrick Lencioni would suggest uh, this kind of thing too, that very few groups get to a very honest, a very, uh, I think he calls it um, uh, transparent nakedness or something like that, where we're, we're absolutely honest with each other. And we're not only honest with the other, each other, but we're also accepting of other people's honesty. And see, that's, that's where, that's where, the norming becomes a beautiful thing. So norming is when, when the truth is shared, right? You have vulnerability, you have trust, you have uh, openness, okay? You have all that stuff starting to happen. So what's happening is people start to norm. This is called the norming stage. They, they, they begin to they're, they begin to become very honest with each other, very open with each other. And um, uh, because of that, and they become very accepting of each other. Okay. It's quite difficult to clearly outline in the research given the exact place the stage of storming stops and norming begins. It is clear that what begins the norming and finally ends the storming is when, listen now, a members of the group begin to speak truth 
or state the reality of what is going on within the group. Acceptance of the truth or the realities of the group begin the first steps towards the norming stage, allowing for the sharing of intimacy and connection as honest personal opinions are expressed and accepted. It is the individuals or in the, it is the individuals or the individual in the group that is least conflicted about the issues of relational intimacy that will most often see and name the issues, speaking the truth about the realities of the group. I'm going to say that again. Listen now. Okay, so what ends the norming, the storming stage, the fight stage, and enters into the norming and kind of coming together and building unity, like true unity, not a pseudo unity, and actually bringing about peace and not a pseudo peace, okay, and we'll talk about that in a second. What actually does that? And he says this, it is the individuals or often individual in the group that is least conflicted about the issues of relational intimacy. So it's often the person in the group that looks at what's going on Okay, and cares about the mission of the group and not just, will people like me? I don't want to get fired. I don't want people to think poorly of me because I'm rocking the boat. I want everyone to like me, so I'm not going to say anything. Even though all of us know that there's a ton of craziness going on, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to be the one that gets fired. I don't want to be the one that gets booted. I don't want to be the one that does, people don't like. And so it's often the person with the strongest focus on the mission, okay, and the least, the person who cares the least about the relational intimacy, like, will these people like me, okay? Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, because, I mean, if you look at the prophets all the way through, okay, they were the ones who spoke truth about the group, but they loved the group. They did it in love. So it's not necessarily what, what this is saying or what I believe, uh, what I believe anyway, is that it, 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 they're, not, they're not worried about relational intimacy. They're not like, oh, I, you have to be my friend. I want people to like me. Okay? That people that are, are less, less concerned about that. So it doesn't mean that this person doesn't love you. Okay? The truth sayer, and that, that's what it ends up being, this person, uh, that's what I call him. The truth sayer could love you very much, but they have a bigger picture of what's most important. And you just liking them and being friends with them isn't what's most important. The truth and the reality of what's going on and coming to a, a place of understanding by opening up the truth, by speaking the truth, by sharing the truth, by getting the conversation to be like, no, guys, let's be really honest with what's going on here, okay? That person is, is, it ends up being the truth, Sarah. That person can love you very much, but they're not so worried about some sort of fa false intimacy with you. And it's usually that person in the group who speaks the truth about the realities of the group. The insight into the truth and the honest sharing of personal opinions allows the group to reject the illusion of group closeness. Pay attention. In this storming stage, even though it's still storming, people can have an illusion and they can tease themselves. They can trick themselves to think, oh no, everything's okay. And it's not. They don't actually have true honesty, true relationship. In fact, oftentimes, and we see that, and the truth is, guys, most groups, most groups ne never get past this stage. What they end up doing is they end up scapegoating. I'm going to draw a goat. Okay. A goat is supposed to have horns. Okay. What they end up doing is they end up scapegoating and kicking someone out and then bringing a new person in, which brings them back to that forming stage. But of course, that forming stage feels like for them, ah, oh, it feels like they have peace now. It feels like they're here. But really, all they've done is they come back to a pseudo
They've come back to the beginning. Now all of them are like, well, who's this new guy? Well, we need to figure out where he's fitting, right? Or what's our group, even if they don't get a new guy, what's our group going to look like now that we just kicked out that guy? So now everyone has to readjust and figure out the new, the new system because they just got rid of that guy. But what it does do, though, it, it brings about a certain amount of peace from this fight because we're going back to the forming stage. But that's not norming. That's not norming at all. Okay? Norming is when somewhere right around here, you have a truth sayer who is willing to speak about the reality of what is going on in the organization, in the culture, in the group, in the church, in the small group, in the something. Someone is willing to stand up and say, or the, or the whistleblower in the organization saying, guys, this is what's really going on. And I care about the greater mission or the greater purpose than I care about everyone liking me. And I'm I, and I and everyone being my friend. Now that doesn't mean that they don't love people. They could love people very much, but they they care about the greater perspective because they realize that in this fighting stage, we we are pretending everything is okay. And this is when you get this stage here is where you get into that um, you know uh, the 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 stuff the um, the leadership stuff on like. The, when you speak truth, right? Most people talk about uh, 80%, right? They, they share 80, well, let me, you know, do you mind if I say something to you? You know, and, and then they share about 80% of what they actually want to say. Uh, and then there's that, there's that last kind of 18% where you need to push someone into, um, push someone into, you have to be like, you have to be pretty close to be in that, that top 18%. In fact, that, that top that top 8%, right? Where you're really sharing what you think of people and what you think of the organization, what's going on, right? That is seldom ever reached. And then we have the last 2%. And I know um, a good friend of mine, Lindsay Anderson, would always really kind of spoke about the 2%, just sharing the 2%. Uh, and I, and we, talk, we, share, we talk lots about that kind of stuff. Um, about like, are we sharing absolutely everything with each other? Or is there things in my head I'm saying, well, I, that I do think that, but I wouldn't say that. Why? Because, you know, that kind of thing. Um, because, you know, the person won't be able to handle it. You know that they won't, they'll just start an argument. Everyone will fight. It'll, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and so um, this is not like sharing stuff that you think, uh, you know, like where you're just trying to be mean or something like that. No, this is like sharing honest things with each other. Um, we seldom get to there. And, and, and uh, so uh, this, that, that statement of it is the individual or, or it is the individuals or individual in the group that is the least con con conflicted about the issues of relational intimacy that will most often see and name the issues speaking the truth about the realities of the group. The insights into the truth are the honest sharing of person and the honest sharing of personal opinions allows the group to reject the illusions of group closeness. And guys, when you recognize that, that a very low percentage of groups, that means small groups and churches and those kind of things too, ever get into stage three, and most of them are in a cycle of forming and then storming, and then at the end of storming, we scapegoat somebody and then we go back to forming. Think about the church and the hiring and firing of pastors. Most churches are in a cycle of this. And it doesn't always end with the pastor being kicked out or one of the elders getting kicked out or one of the congregations. It doesn't always end up with someone getting kicked out. But what we've done as a culture and as, as, as a church is that we have... Uh, gotten into the idea that, well, before things get too far this way, we just leave. So pastors serve four to five years and leave. Youth pastors serve three to four years and leave. We're in the cycle of coming and going. And then the truth is, we never have to get to this. But oftentimes, Oftentimes, when the person doesn't leave, so when a person, when, when someone doesn't restart the cycle, right, what happens is we get to 
this stage, this, this, uh, this, this stage right here, where someone steps up and speaks the truth. And what happens more often than not is not that everyone accepts the truth and everyone starts to share openly and absolutely honestly where there's grace poured down like rain and, and, and kindness and love and, and people just start to become profoundly open, sharing all those, confessing sin and sharing all. That doesn't happen on a regular basis. What does happen is that as a group, someone is picked. This is somewhat unconsciously, but someone is picked as the person that is the cause of all the problems and we get rid of that person. We scapegoat that person. And we fire them, we, 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 whatever. We tell them that they have to leave. We treat them like rubbish until they leave. But we scapegoat someone. And then, and then basically what we're doing is we're killing them. Whether it's their reputation or their, their ministry or their job or their reputation. We do something like that. And then we get back to this stage one and we think, ah, oh, see, he was the problem. This is better now. But what happens? What happens, and guys, it's obvious what happens because what happens is give it three or four years, give it two or three years, and you get to this again. And you can see organizations that are stuck in a pattern of this and they can't seem to figure out what's wrong because... They keep scapegoating the truth sayer. And the group keeps rejecting and kind of wanting to blame someone for all the things that's going on that aren't really, you know, that aren't necessarily that person's fault. No, they can be, they can, sometimes they're, they're, they have their part in it. But, but oftentimes we want to just lump everything on to somebody, right? And what, what we see is, Every couple of years, every, 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 uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying every couple, not every necessarily two years, but every so often, and you can see different, remember, this forming stage can take a month and it can take three years. It could take six years, right? So, so, I mean, whatever, whatever the pattern is, you have to look at the history of the organization and say, okay, what kind of pattern are we falling into here? Are we in this cycle every two or three years? Are we in this cycle every year and a half? Are we in this cycle every six years? What, what is the cycle here that we're in, right? Are we getting to the norming stage where, every, where people have come into this understanding that by the grace of God, people can share absolutely anything that they, that they, that they think is true, even if they think it's true. And we can evaluate it openly, even if someone says something horrible about me. Well, Adam, you're not a very good pastor. I can go, okay, you know what? I thank you for being honest because that would be hard to share. And, and let's talk about why do you think that? And, and I need to take some time to like, everyone is rooted in seeking the truth, even if to the individual, it, it, it feels, you know, it hurts. There's no secrecy. It's not hush hush. It's not okay. Well, let's try to get this person out. Let's hush hush. You know, don't let anyone know. It's nothing like that. It is openness. It is vulnerability. It is honesty. We don't get there. Okay. And then from that stage, stage four is performing. Once this stage of, and I'm going to call it, it's norming, but it's really a stage of truth and vulnerability. Okay. Truth acceptance. Okay, once that stage has gone through where everyone now has become open and begins to trust each other and gets to understand and becomes to understand that, okay, that person is focused on, they're not trying to destroy me. Okay, we're not, we're not doing this anymore. We're not, we're not fighting for stages. If, 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 uh, if Fred is a better leader and, 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 and Tim s steps into the group and says, guys, you know what? Fred is probably our best leader. We should let him lead. And I know, Ken, you're leading right now, but I'll be honest with you, Ken, uh, Fred is the best leader. And I'm not trying to, I mean, I just think all of us kind of know that, don't we? So Ken, we want to we want to make sure that you're, you, you find your place. What do you feel you're gifted at? We all feel that you're gifted at this. 
Why don't we put you into that and get you a job that's focused on that? And why don't we let Ken lead where he is gifted at? Like something like that. Can you imagine an organization that did that? Where that people were that honest and that open? I mean, it, it seldom exists, but it's what needs to happen. Okay, so once that reads, then we have the performing, right? The performing stage, and, and that that's self-explanatory. Basically, the, the organizations, the group starts to perform, right? They start to get things done. They start to... They start to, to work together openly and honestly. And so this is the thing. This is, why, this is why performing starts to happen. Because of the truth, being willing to be open and the vulnerability and the trust that gets built in stage three, people stop worrying about politics. People stop worrying about trying to make sure they, they get what they want as they're fighting others to, to not get what they want, right? Because in this stage of forming, of fighting, is storming, everyone's trying to, like, you're like, well, that person got a raise. I want to get a raise. And that person, well, I, you know, and everyone's, well, I can't say stuff to that person because they get angry. And, oh, that person gossips. So you have to be, and oh, that, and, and that, I want to spend more time with that person, but I don't want to be with that. Like, it's all politics. It's all games. It's all games. Because people aren't being absolutely honest and open with each other. And so what happens when everyone starts becoming really on, all open and honest and vulnerable with each other, they get into a place where they stop wasting, you know, 20% uh, you know, um, of their energy, 40% of their energy, maybe 60% of their energy playing all these games because you can't be honest with the people that aren't doing a very good job because they're in leadership and they're insecure and they're, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh all of that is, is, is gone here, and you can spend 100% of your energy focusing on the mission. Right? Focusing on the mission. So guys, this, this group formation, stage 1, 2, 3, and 4, is very important for us to pay attention to and, um, and talk about. Now, next week, sorry, next video... I'm going to talk about uh, scapegoating, okay? And that, that, that'll that be my focus. But And then we'll talk about how scapegoating will bring them together. I talked about a little bit about today, but I think it's a, it's a bigger topic that we need to talk about theologically and, and look through the scriptures and how, how we are prone at this stage to scapegoat the truth there. And that um, oftentimes, uh, yeah, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. I don't want to go too much longer. So I hope that, that forming us... Um, Forming, storming, uh, norming, and performing. Uh, think about that. Uh, remember that you're probably somewhere in this cycle, okay? Because just about every organization is. Uh, don't think that, well, no, my, my organization isn't. No, in order to break through this, guys, it takes a profound amount of, of intentional God-honoring, God-focused, Holy Spirit-empowered uh, leader, leader, leadership, okay? And so most organizations don't go there at all. So I would encourage you not to assume, no, 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 we are. Don't assume that. Assume that more likely or not, and I don't want to be a pessimist, but assume that you guys in your groups for the most part are in a place of, the, of, of, of embracing that illusion of group closeness, there's a bit of an illusion of group closeness. Because I think that that if we assume that and then get into, you know, searching it through and we're not, then hey, praise the Lord. But I think unfortunately most, most uh, groups, I mean the, the research is there, most groups are just cycling through stage one and two. Okay, guys, I pray that, that, uh, that this helps. Uh, if you have questions, uh, text me, message me, let me know, and uh, I pray that you have a great and godly day.